All right, so it has been Sex Advice Week on The Burt Show with the Honest Women podcast this week. Oh, today's got a fun one. Uh, if you are listening to the podcast with kids in the car or you're listening live with kids in the car, we're going to talk about adult stuff here, like all the fun stuff, low libido, pain during sex, difficulty achieving orgasm. Today is Sexual Dysfunction Day. Uh, good morning, Jessica. Good morning. How are you today? I am fantastic. I am uh, thinking that I'm happy I'm in the Midwest where there are no hurricanes. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and put the fun and dysfunction today. Yeah, there you go. Let's do it. You want to start with your email? <laughs> yeah. So we got an email recently, Jessica, from um, a Burt Show listener. I won't share his name. And in the subject, it goes, should I tell my wife, dot, dot, dot. And then in the email says that I'm going to try Viagra. Would it be better if she thought that, that she was irresistible? I can keep it a secret as I used cash at the urologist. We've been married over 20 years. I'm 61 and she is 46. Um, I would love to know what the Burr Show team thinks I should do. Oh, 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 okay. My first thought is absolutely yes, you should. Yeah. Um, I am going to go ahead and hypothesize that it is going to be more of a problem for him from a psychological standpoint and less for her. I think he would be surprised how many women struggle with insecurities around sex or low libido or not being able to achieve orgasm. So a lot of times when a male now struggles, it can normalize the sexual experience for the woman as well. So I think that conversation might go a lot better than he thinks. Yeah, I want to take this from the other side of it. Um, what would you advise women to say? Because I think that there would be a lot of women, once they hear that their men are on that, forget about his age. I think once you get to a certain age, women are like, yeah, do whatever you got to do. I need some. Uh, uh -huh. um, but how should a woman, a younger woman, receive that information if he is vulnerable enough to share that with him? Because they, they, they could take that very personally. Oh, absolutely. Because one of the, I, I mean, if we look at the reasons that people are drawn to sex outside of just pleasure, of course. One is approval, and that is very high for women, a lot higher for women than it is for men. So it is a tendency to think that a male can't achieve arousal or become erect because they're not attracted to you. False. Fact check that. That is absolutely false. There is such a psychological component for both men and women. So women, I think, one, you have to match the vulnerability in that conversation and be able to say, okay, I'm having my own insecurity right now with just how I look and have an open conversation about it. What happens though is it gets blocked or people are just afraid to have it. Mm -hmm. But if you can match the man's vulnerability because you're spot on, Bert, it's a very vulnerable conversation. Yeah, I think it's important to remember um, it's so easy to make it about you when it has nothing to do with you. And I think having that self-awareness and taking your ego out of it in a conversation like that is so important because here he is coming to you yeah. with something that is very vulnerable and now you're going to dump on him and make it worse by making his erectile dysfunction about you and your insecurities, which is such a a very uncool thing to do to your partner. <laughs> and, and there's so much, you know, for a guy, there's so much self-value in that area of their lives also. for the, So for them to say, I'm feeling less of a man because of this and I'm doing something about it. That's not well received, man. That's going to be a big old problem or a little old problem. Yeah. And it's <laughs> the, the quote that I say all the time. You're not the main character in other people's story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if it were a situation where the guy wasn't actually taking the initiative to get himself some help? Was the, Do you think that it's ever a good idea for the woman to suggest it to him? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, yes, because, it, and it can be approached from a place of vulnerability again. Listen, this is an important for me. This sexual relationship is important for me in the context of our, of connection. And I'm struggling with your lack of having a desire to be intimate. Can we talk more about that? Also, you guys, sometimes it, it goes down to hormones. Like it really sometimes is just biological and you need to get your hormones checked. It doesn't actually always have to be psychological. So let's talk about the big O or the non-existent O. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we should probably stay here for a couple of minutes. Yeah. So I don't know what the percentage it is of women that can't reach that um, with a man um, through penetration. So 
what do you say to those women that are frustrated in that area? Okay, let me give you just a quick fact. It takes, on average, 45 minutes for a woman to reach orgasm through sex. 45 minutes. Now, that number comes because a lot of times it takes 20 minutes to just calm down the brain (laughs) of a woman, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know about you all, but I don't have 45 minutes. (laughs) So, I mean, we got young kids in our house. So, Women, I mean, here's the thing is you can introduce things into your sex life. I am all for vibrators. I I think I can say that on the show, right? Uh I am all for the use of that. It's all about conversation, though, with your partner. And remember, ladies, it doesn't always have to be about penetration. And if you, I have yet to meet a man in my office when I'm working with couples who it says that erection or sorry, ejaculation is the goal. That's not the goal. In fact, most of my men will say it's just about the experience of being physical with my partner through touch. Dudes say Women, that? Women. Dudes say it all huh? the time. Now, mind you, I'm a, a couples therapist. I'm not like a, hey, so you're dating 15 women. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. that's not my deal here. Mm-hmm. But from couples, yeah. Mm-hmm. Men just like the experience of being intimate with their partner. And it doesn't always mean ejaculation. Mm-hmm. Well, now, again, if we're talking about sexual dysfunction, that's a whole other conversation. I just mean in the context of orgasms and the pressure that gets put on women to have it. And so remember, ladies, 45 minutes. How can we shorten that time yeah i'm like watching the guys kind of laugh i'm like yeah guys 45 minutes but we yeah because i mean my brain is it's a scary place so when you are getting intimate and in order to get to that place where you're going to be able to experience peak pleasure you your you do have to have a clear mind and it takes a minute to clear the mind you ever just say to bart look like hey it's five o'clock right now i'm gonna go in the room Come in there at 535. <laughs> After I do my meditation. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, it's taking you 45 gonna... <laughs> minutes, man. You don't got that in Because <laughs> there is a whole psychological component to it. And, you know, we talk about there is a beautiful book out there for women, Come As You Are. Actually, men should read it, too. It helps you understand it. I can I can send it along to put in the show, lo- show notes, Come As You Are. But it talks about the psychological component. And women tend to have a really sensitive break and our break is attached to that parasympathetic nervous system men tend to have a really sensitive accelerator so if you have a man with a really really sensitive accelerator meaning he can get excited really really quick matched with a woman who has a really sensitive braking system meaning it takes her a long time to calm down that nervous system that is a really hard dynamic in the bedroom now take that 45 minutes with somebody with a sensitive break and Mm. that can double or it can mean that there is no orgasm for that woman so being able to play around with some things again in the context of what you're comfortable with with your relationship can be really important hey jessica we only have about 60 seconds here and again this is jessica hutchison from the honest women podcast so when libidos don't match up right she could have a higher libido he could have a higher libido how do you get through that One, I'm just going to say, have your first and foremost, have your hormones tested, ladies. You'd be shocked how low testosterone can be. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. But start having a conversation about it with your spouse. I am struggling with getting excited. How can we make that a little spicier in the bedroom or outside of the bedroom? Okay. All right. So tomorrow morning, we will continue the um, sex advice week on The Burt Show. Tommy, what do we got for next week? Or for tomorrow, I should say. Body image or- and self-esteem. Body image and self-esteem tomorrow. A major one. Okay. Again, listen to the Honest Women podcast. That is part of the Pioneer Network. I legally have to tell you that because I own it. Jessica, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'll see you guys on Friday. The Burt Show.